to actually know that this happens? Yes. Okay, hi. Hi, camera. Do you hear me from there? Perfect. Okay, that was very fun. <laughs> I've never seen a camera that I can catch. I'll be like that. I'm Cheryl Lazar. I'm an honor host, blogger, blogger. I work with CBSnews.com. You can catch me at CherylLazar.com. Okay, awesome. Um, so, and at the time I was, I was being asked to go as a guest, and I wanted to be a guest more on TV and news shows. And at the time, you know, with my friends who were producers were like, you gotta start this blog thing. We're all into the producers want to bring bloggers on the show. And so I'm like, okay, well, so I started the pop report one weekend. I, I kept on procrastinating and I was like, I gotta do it. You know, so many people procrastinate on the name. They're like, it, got, it has to be a name that really represents everything I'm doing. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do the pop report. So I bought the URL, started it, and I was like, okay, this is gonna be the thing that brings you all things entertainment and news and whatever pops my thought. And you know what, I, I started pitching my site to producers. I go, yeah, I talk about pop culture. And so I started going on news shows representing the pop reports. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and I just want to, that's just one little bit of information I want to extend to all of you, um, or insight, is that I really do believe that it's not just perception, it's reality, but if you want to put yourself um, out there, if you want to get a job doing a specific thing, we have the tools here right now at our fingertips to start creating things and content right now. You don't need to wait for that big job. Some people might want to work for huge outlets or magazines or you know time.com or cnn.com. But if you have ideas and, and you want to create content, you can do that before you know having them hire you to start your portfolio. And I'm sure a lot of you know that. How many of you are bloggers here? I want to get a sense. How many, how many of you are developers? There are there are a lot of smart people. <laughs> and the people that aren't bloggers, what do you do? Because I saw some people that just didn't have any hands up on it. Just content management. So, CMS? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. CMS. <laughs> <laughs> what? Web marketing. Okay, cool. So a lot of blending and kind of blogging and social media and everything. Um, I want to show you a video that I... So, for me, I, I started out, you know, blogging, but I wasn't just doing writing. I've always um, integrated a lot of different things into what I do. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through some things, um, some kind of rules that I go by for whether it be social media and Twitter or blogging. Um, you always have to have consistency of brand. So I always say, really sit down and, and know your message because people can see through a fake brand or image. Um, and, I, and I really do believe that once you embrace your authentic voice, you can find your audience and your audience can find you. So it's like being someone you're not. I always say with my friends who are like, I want to start blogging. I'm like, find that thing that your friends are like, you talk so much about, it's ridiculous. You're like the master of that topic. And if you know that you have that mastery of something, then that's probably what you should be blogging about. Because blogging is all about finding that expertise. What are you an expert on? What are you obsessed with? And that's that thing that you'll be able to consistently blog and, and bring content to your audience. Because um, blogging, as you all know, isn't just about you know randomly popping up here and there. It sometimes gets hard to create that consistency. But I, I say it's like getting to that point where blogging is like going to the bathroom, where it's like it's, it's no, you know it's not even a thought. You're like I gotta just get down this idea, or I just gotta tweet out something, or I just gotta video blog and upload that thing. And if, it's a topic that you really truly love and are passionate about, that will come through. So find that thing. And of course, I always say, it's like, don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun with it. Um, because people see through that too. And it's like, the internet, uh, I connect with as it being like cheers. Everybody knows your name. And no one's going to know your name if you pop up, you know, here and there, and like once a week or once every two weeks, like, I'm really smart and I have this thing to say. You need to be there all the time because people will become loyal to you, your message, and your blog. Um, converse and share. So, you know, between Twitter, I kind of look at Twitter as much. You know, blogging and blogging, obviously, is something a bit longer form. But it still kind of has the same rules to me a bit. So your brand and your blog shouldn't just be about you. I wish this, like, worked, but... Because <coughs> I have, actually, let's see if the blog... Um, my blog, I used to do a bit more um, 
And so here's, here's some of the stuff I blog about. And then I'll also show you my cbsnews.com blog because I, I blog about digital trends and pop culture and CBS News. But I got that job because of my personal blog. That created my portfolio to get um, a job at CBS News and at many other places. So at first I was you know, getting hired to do video blogs. I, I was an honor host, I'll backtrack, um, for a lot of websites, I was doing a lot of red carpet. And everyone wanted to create edgy content. It was like all the same old crap, like what are you wearing? Or like, finish this sentence. If my eyes are blue, your eyes are, and it was just like really ridiculous. So, but I, what I thought was funny was what happened in between the takes. Like the madness of the entertainment industry and publicists that were bringing you their content. So I picked up the time in Nokia N95. This is before iPhones, you know, you could even upload videos <coughs> to YouTube or live stream. And it was the only phone, uh, video phone where you could upload to the internet from wherever you were at. And I just started video blogging from everywhere. Um, sometimes from my car, which wasn't always um, so safe. And, you know, sometimes from the red carpet. And and I just I just started doing it, and it wasn't like anyone was listening. I didn't expect like an audience was watching, but I, I started doing it because I believed in the content and I believed in what I was doing, and I was having fun. But you know, slowly, people started noticing, and I would go to an event and be like, "Oh, I saw that video blog of you, you know, interviewing Norm Macdonald," <laughs> which I did. You know, I was, I was driving during the writer's strike, and I saw a huge group there were on strike. And I ended up bumping into Norm Macdonald, and I happened to have a video phone on me. And that was like the light bulb in my head, like, okay, there's something here. And it's not, you know, I don't need to rely on a, a, a real outlet to create content. And so as I continue noticing that people are noticing, I just continued doing it consistently. And I would, um, you know, upload it to my blog. I would have an embed. Actually, I was using Kite TV at the time which I thought was really great because um, the player, you could just embed the whole player, and unfortunately YouTube doesn't have that functionality right now where you can embed your whole YouTube player on your website. So right now what I do for people that if you want to, if you're interested in video blogging, um, I do have the YouTube app on my iPhone, and I will just shoot videos and you can upload it right to your YouTube, and then that even connects to your Twitter. So if, uh, if you want people to be notified right away when you upload a video to your YouTube, you can do that. Or if you want to do manually, you can then send the status update to all your social networks. Um, so then I lost, I happened to lose my Nokia phone one day. It was a $400 phone. And I was like, fuck that. I'm, I'm not buying a $400 phone, I'm a blogger. Like, I can't do this. But you know what? I give them a ton of promotion. Being out there at all the tech events, blogging, and like telling everyone when they asked me, like when Norm McDonald was like, what are you doing right now? What is this? Like it's a phone. And, and I was like, I'm gonna get in touch with those people and get a free one. So I Googled Nokia press release. <laughs> and I found a press contact at Nokia. This is like four years ago. And I, I wrote an email on the subject, Hollywood Reporter Nokia N95. And I got a reply back, and, and so I replied to the reply back, who, who just had another email, like an emergency email, this person, and say, hey, I'm a Hollywood reporter. I use your N95, it's important to what I do. I lost mine, and I would love to figure out a way to do a co-promotion. Anyway, long story short, I ended up getting in touch with someone uh, who they gave me a press phone, <laughs> and I built a relationship with them to the point where then when they were doing uh, a partnership with the Webby Awards, they needed a video blogger, the first person they thought of was me. And so that was the first time that then I got hired to professionally video blog for someone at an event. And then that was the beginning of it, it continued from there. And then those video blogs I started showing when I was meeting with CBS News when I got in touch with them. And I was like, yeah, I'm the official video blogger for Internet Week in New York, it's really awesome. I'm interviewing <laughs> all the founders and all the techies and I'm on the scene. That was, um, my blog at the time was called On The Go, because it was like, I'm on the go. So it makes sense that I'm shooting this for anywhere, and it could be literally anywhere. Um, and he's like, well, what if I, I would love to maybe figure out a way to, for you to do that for us, you know? Because obviously, for news networks, as you know, who are falling apart, and they don't have a lot of money to hire people, they will do anything to run, either get free content, which Huffington Post has created that whole strategy, or get content for really cheap. And, for him, it was obviously intriguing the fact that I could just shoot anything with my camera and get access to anything. 
And so I said, let me just do what I've been doing for everyone else for you. Let me do videos on the go for cbsnews.com and be a blogger. And so uh, last September I was hired as the first video blogger for cbsnews.com. And I started coming, covering everything from pop culture to digital trends. Uh, I started doing Skype videos because what I noticed is, you know, while it's fun to be on the go and be on the scene, my blog is actually called On the Scene, which I'll show you right now. Um, so check it out. I also started doing um, Skype videos, which you can record yourselves if you're also, anyone's into video blogging here. I suggest, you know, on the go, use your iPhone or Nokia, there are apps to upload right to YouTube. Um, then also, um, there's a thing called iCam, which if you want to do interviews with someone who's not in your vicinity, you can, um, <coughs> so I'm actually, I'll show you one that I did that you guys will laugh at. Let me just find it because it wasn't set up on this computer. Um, and this you can, you can literally it creates that box to box effect with any news station. Um, so this is a video I did. Does everyone know Double Rainbow Guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I built a beat on, all right, and, and this kind of goes with finding your beat and finding your message. I realized I wasn't gonna compete against the day-to-day news guys, and I'm not a hard news person. My, Afghanistan is not my beat. Um, I'm interested in politics. I mean, I'll go to Afghanistan if I get into like bloggers, you know? <laughs> but, um, it's just not my thing, but I, I go, what's my thing? You know, I'm not a gadget girl. I, I know technology, but I'm not like, oh, here are the specs to this new phone, you know? Um, but I love the internet. And so I was like, okay, well, as more and more kind of internet viral personalities are popping up, I was like, well, what if I'm the first to interview them? And I'm, the, I'm like their Barbara Walters. <laughs> so I, uh, this was one of the first, I'm trying to find, um, should be by upload date because we got a ton of, or maybe view count. Um, Antoine Dodson was one of the, okay, Double Rainbow Men Speaks. He just got 721,000 views for CBS. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so how this worked is, um, as I was trying to figure out my beat more at CBS News, and um, people still don't understand what I do there, unfortunately. Um, they, because they go, you cover sometimes pop culture, social trends, we don't get what that means. Um, and, and, but you're not like a technology expert. I'm like, well, I cover what's trending online that's influencing our offline conversation. I feel like maybe some of you might get that, but as the internet and mainstream pop culture are coming together more and more, the internet is our culture. It's not just about being a tech person anymore. And that's what I try to translate for the news. And whether I take news stories and try to say what's happening with that news story online. And, and more specifically, take the personalities and means and kind of try to dissect them and be the first to interview them and to tell their story for the masses. So I ended up getting the exclusive with Double Rainbow. <laughs> I, 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 reached out, I reached out to him over YouTube. Um, and said at cbsnews.com interview. And we were about to, what happens in, with our video people at cbsnews.com is they'll, they'll figure out these memes or SEO keywords that are trending on Google and they'll be like, oh, let's do a video about it. So we were just gonna do a wrap-up video of like, oh, this is what's going on. And we'd all emailed him, we hadn't heard for a day or so. And just as we're like finishing our edit, I get an email from him, and I'm like, oh my god, it's a Marine Corps man, just you know? and, and, he was, and he wrote me saying he was gonna be doing an interview on the radio, but he could talk to me. So I was like, okay, and then I'm like, it's not video though, because my whole thing is, what's got, got, got me ahead, or I guess uh, separated me from other people, is that even if Mashable or TechCrunch gets an exclusive, no one ever gets video. I don't know if you notice. It's always a headline, it's always a quote, but no one ever gets that person on video. And that's where I found is my area of expertise. And so anyway, I got him on video. So here is a, here's, I, I'm not gonna show you the longer version. Here's the one we edited that's gotten a ton of views. So here you go. Whoa, that's a full rainbow. <laughs> oh man. Oh 
But sometimes, that's why I say, if you're going to be doing a video, keep it short. If you can't edit it, um, then you know, keep it up to four minutes. And sometimes I've done, and I've done that in the past for my video vlogs, where I'll literally interview someone. And I'm like, okay, this is five minutes long. I'm not editing this, FYI. So, um, and, and sometimes people like that authenticity. They're not expecting you to be like overly edited and everything. Um, and, and if you preface that this is just kind of your video diary and it has to do with the subject matter that you're blogging about, it will fly, you know? Um, but I definitely do suggest if, if you're around things, whether if you're blogging about, you know, whether it be food and you're at a farmer's market, you don't need to put your cell phone video, but show people things that interest you or inspire you and add that to your blog posts. Yes? Are you usually doing the audio live or are you doing the audio later? Audio? That's the audio that goes with the video. No, you do it all live. I mean, it's all live. It's recorded. Video and audio were put together, thankfully. Um, so, yeah, usually I, I do it live, and, and sometimes, I mean, I'll do, all right, I'm going to show you another, all right, let me try to find this one. This is the first video I did for, um, and this will be an example of how I did it live, um, and on the go, and I didn't edit it at all. Um, so let me just, I'm going to cycle to Filter, great site. They did a post about when I got hired for CBS, it was easier, but I thought I'd look through them. Um, okay, um, let's see if it's in here. This was my first blog post. Let's see, no, older. Okay, let me see. Okay, this is uh, my first blog I did with, uh, all right, here, with Katie Couric. And I wasn't expecting to do it, as you'll see from this video. Um, damn it! <laughs> to get the real story on them, there's really only one place to go. CNET.com. Discover something new at CNET.
which I love. It was like what I used forever, and I have moved on to the iPhone uh, because it's just easier to upload to YouTube, just the functionalities of it, and for live streaming. Uh, but that Nokia, I really liked it. And, and also because the iPhone used to, the video quality, um, the movement was very jerky. And now what's great, and I actually have an iPhone 4 with me right now. Um, you know, and, and not everyone, once again, is going to be able maybe to, to do all, you know, shoot themselves. And that's why I say, you know, start off um, maybe shooting, of, you know, what your content is rather than always yourself. I've gotten used to, I said, if I ever evolve into another human, I'm going to like, be born like this or something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's great about the new iPhone is that when you shoot, instead of you going like this, you can actually reverse the shot so you can see yourself. You can see uh, here. Like, so when I, here, one um, so that's for video blogging. I know some. So right now, um, if I could either decide to shoot the screen, as you can see, I'm shooting the screen, right? Or I could shoot that, which makes it much easier if I was going to do that and talk to someone and I want me on the camera. I just literally have them there, I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, you gotta obviously practice it, but um, if you do it, and that's it goes back to consistency. The more you do something, the better you're going to be at it, and and the more you'll be able to you know get your message right. It's like a, you know a sculpture. It's like at first where you get a rock and you're you know you're carving it, you can't really see the image. So the more you do something, the more you'll understand what you're trying to do and your audience will too. And I really do believe that. Um, also, I, I really do, I put my tweets and my content through this, uh, Tony Shea actually paid this one. Um, it's a little rule he calls, he, he puts his content through this filter. When tweeting or when blogging, he goes, I-C-E-E, -E, inspire, connect, entertain, educate. And I really believe that in this time of, you know, everyone thinks of bloggers just this crazy narcissistic fool sometimes. <laughs> or when you tweet, when you're like, oh, what do you blog about your life? Or like, what do you tweet about your cat? And I, I do believe if you put your content, whether it's blogging or tweeting through that filter, uh, you'll be able to create information that's valuable for your audience and valuable enough for them to feel like they're connected to you on a personal level too, that you're not just giving them information all the time. Um, also, keep learning. Um, as a blogger, I'm constantly researching. So just because you get to the top of your field and maybe you're the leader and people are following you and learning from you, you need to keep up with a lot of people, yes. The commercial at the beginning of the video? That Is was, that because of CBS? Yes. That's not because you have learned YouTube? No, YouTube too now, I mean, with obviously the partner program, I don't know, if some of you might know this thing called the partner program on YouTube does. When people wonder why YouTubers make uh, some of them six figures right now, it's because they're part of the partner program. So they get um, a percentage of the ad sales, basically, the ads that air during their video. So YouTube also, it's not just if you're you know, with an official company. <coughs> if you're a partner on YouTube, so if your videos get a, uh, like over a few thousand even sometimes, and obviously some of the YouTubers have hundreds of thousands, uh, you will probably have maybe an ad at, at the beginning of your video. But you're getting good money, so that's what's great about it. You were talking about blogging on the go a lot earlier. Yeah. Um, how do you like to update your WordPress on the phone? Like how do you, is there a way other than just it's, Twitter or YouTube and then doing it later on an actual computer? Yeah, it's interesting. With my, I really do, and you, you might not like this answer, but uh, I really, my on-the-go stuff is usually through Twitter. However, I do have an embed on my WordPress blog. Mm -hmm. So people, if they're going to my hub day-to-day -day or uh, randomly, they'll still be able to be connected to what I'm doing. Um, and then I look at my blogs on WordPress as a bit more, um, you know, I try to embed my videos. It's, it's on-the-go, but it's not like as on-the-go as my Twitter. My Twitter is really, I, I do that more on-the-go than necessarily um, doing my WordPress updates because my WordPress, which you can't really see on this, um, on the front page of it, um, I wish I could, I'm going to actually do it here maybe. Um, I'm going to show you, I have blocks so that wouldn't really be able to upload on the, like, on the go. Mm -hmm. um, let me show you. So I, I really do though believe that uh, 
Um, and that's why, and I know this, uh, some people use Tumblr, but. <laughs> yeah, Tumblr's great for on the go updates. Tumblr's great for on the go. I look at, WordPress is great to manage your site. I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like Tumblr still looks like a longer version of Twitter. Um, so if you're gonna have a hub for your brand, um, and as a blog, I really do believe that WordPress is the way to go. And Tumblr is more, yeah, like, kind of, more of a behind the scenes action. Um, but I've always, I've been using WordPress for years here. Let me just connect to show you what I've done with my blog, since it's not showing up on this. Um, <coughs> any other questions while we? <coughs> it's hard. That's why I say if you're an insomniac, you will rock the internet. <laughs> because, no, and, and it's true. Being, creating content this day and age and being an internet addict, you literally need to be an addict. You really need to love it. And that's why I say choose that thing you're passionate about because you, there will be times that you're like, oh, you need to update it. But if it's something you love and you sincerely love connecting with the audience and you love internet <coughs> culture and you're passionate about this community, that will keep you going even in those moments where you're like, oh, but I'm so tired, or like, I haven't updated in two days. Like, people are gonna think I'm non-existent, you know? But uh, you have to decide, like, for me it's been interesting because I have my cbsnews.com blog, I have my personal blog, I have my Twitter, I have my Facebook fan page. So it, goes, it comes to a point where like, where do I put the information? Like, what do I decide? And I also blog on the Huffington Post. So, and you want to build your own brand because in the end, no matter where you are, if brands are you know hiring you to do something. And now this day and age, I get hired sometimes you know to do um, an event for a brand or to be at a conference or do stuff like that. We're actually being paid to do that. They'll look at not just where I'm blogging, but where the numbers that are going to my web page, my Twitter, my Facebook fan page. So as much as you might be at places that are getting a lot of traffic, it's important to continue to develop really you, and unless you're selling a product and obviously that product and you're representing it, that product needs to be getting those numbers as well. But the same and age, you are the product and that's the difference. So this is my WordPress blog, you can't, you see how I've, I've made, so I have little, you know, it's kind of like uh, the blogs that have those blocks, so I need to do that manually, unless I got an assistant. Um, and then you go to the block and then it goes to uh, the blog about it. So, and that's where I kind of keep people up to date. So my blog, my personal blog has become more of that place where yeah, I can vent and say anything I want. I can keep people up to date with stuff that I'm doing. And, um, and sometimes even can put content that I'm inspired by uh, that I wouldn't be able to put on CBS News or having to post on my blog. What? Where are you actually uploading your videos to? Are they actually going to WordPress or are they going I'll, to WordPress? Like, yeah, I'll tell you. I used to, um, until like six months ago, I was uploading them to Kite TV. I don't know if any of you have heard of Kite.tv. Um, it was a video platform, like the videos, the videos out there. But what was great is at the time they connected with Nokia, and this is before, you know, what, as I said before, you can upload from your iPhone. And so I have, I have if you go to my Kite TV channel, like hundreds of videos, which is really unfortunate because if I was developing that on YouTube um, years ago, I'm sure I would have a, a bigger following on YouTube. I do believe that YouTube has the audience, and, and if you're gonna be developing content right now, I would throw it there because the numbers on YouTube matter right now. People look at those numbers when, if you say, oh, I do video. Um, obviously, you want high quality video, but people like to see numbers. And, and that makes a difference. And, and you see that with the YouTubers today. They've been able to develop their brand just from those numbers they get on YouTube. But you know, it's also about quality, obviously. And if you don't want to go that route, which I do believe it's great to have that archive because people will naturally find it. It won't just be about you putting it out there. Um, you obviously that natural search to YouTube versus other uh, video platforms. You, they don't have that community that get that natural search to your content. I mean, uh, some of these people are getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of you, they've hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I knew that was easy. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what I, I try not to look at that when starting stuff. Um, if you look at numbers, whether it be on Twitter, on your own uh, blog, or on YouTube, 
you'll be trumped all the time and overwhelmed and you'll decide not to start before you start. Because it's so easy to be like, how am I gonna get there to seeing that? And, and that's why I just say, just start. And, and that's why quality is better than quantity. You can have amazing people looking at your video, even if it's a, a few hundred or, you know, 40, but those 40 could be the top bloggers in that niche that you're blogging about. And that matters. And so you can't, you know, underestimate that. And that can't stop you from continuing to create content because you're like, no one's, no one's, you know, reading it. That's why you need to be consistent. So you continue to build your brand and yourself as an expert. Two questions. Yeah. So what are you doing with Ustream? Ustream I'm a big fan of. I know uh, the founders very well. And I've actually, um, I'm hired, there's two things on Ustream. I'm hired to host a lot of the official stuff now. Um, so when there's a premiere going on in the studio, um, you know there's like, there's official premieres like Twilight premiere or Sex in the City premiere. I hosted all those. So that's a, like a whole big shindig, like you have a big live truck and it's five cameras. Um, Live, sometimes I enjoy that. I mean, some people like doing it more. There's someone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, do you know him? Yeah. He's like, yeah, awesome. I hope you do, this is your ops. Um, he goes sometimes on Ustream a lot. I do believe if, if there's a reason to. Sometimes it's like, you have those people that are just like, oh, I'm gonna go live in my living room. And, and okay, that's cool. That continues connecting people to you. But um, if you're some, I mean, I, I do it sometimes going live, just randomly on Ustream, like it when I'm at the CDS News office, I'll be like, I'm live, come and chat. Or sometimes if I'm waiting to interview someone and they're hanging out, I'll say, come live. Right. But, um, so I, I try to, if you're gonna do a Ustream, do the live stream thing, and you wanna just have fun, do that, but try to balance that out with bringing people access to something interesting uh, that they wouldn't have access to, or, you know. Yeah. Thank you, and the second part is uh, your fan page. Mm -hmm. uh, personal. What are you doing as far as you can you go? Yeah, well, there's two things. I have my, it connects to my WordPress page, so my blogs update directly to my Facebook fan page. Right. Um, my Twitter, it's funny, because Twitter you can connect to your Facebook page, but not your Facebook fan page. Which they're smart about, because they want you to update the status on Facebook, which then can connect to Twitter. Um, which I found my audience gets annoyed with. Um, because I started doing that where I was like, okay, well, I'll just send from my cell phone my Facebook update, which you can send it um, right to your Facebook, which then automatically sends to my Twitter. And they were annoyed that I was sending those links and they were having to go not only to the link, but first to that link, to the Facebook, then to the next link. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I try to do is I, I have to do it manually. So a lot of times, I'll update if I have a, a new link on CBS News. Like they get my blog, my personal blogs, but they don't get my CBS News RSS. So I'll be like, hey, check out, I have a new blog post, and I'll put that in my status update on my Facebook fan page as much as possible. I'm really into asking questions. It's not about just being like a megaphone, like, hey, check me out. But um, you know, if you if there are issues that have to do with the content you blog about, so for digital, you know. Um, I might say like, what do you think about privacy? Is this something that affects you? You know, and and, so, and then I might go, oh, and I wrote a blog about it. So it's not just about saying, hey, here's a link to something, but what do you think? Creating a conversation. Um, adding that question in really helps with the interactivity. And the personal Facebook account, how much time are you managing that CRM? Or um, well, that goes, links directly to my Twitter. So that ends up being really easy. Um, I actually found, I, I was sending, the link from my site was one of my personal Facebook, so I was getting like thousands of friend requests, and then I pushed it over to my fan page. But my personal stuff, I don't, I mean, that's my personal stuff. That's just, I let hanging to it more, you know, but it connects to my Twitter, so, and my Twitter pretty much has everything I'm doing. Um, so if anything, I concentrate more on like what I'm adding to my Facebook fan page. Links, also photo, I send through the Facebook uh, photo, they have an email. Uh, when I'm sending on mobile, I'll send the TwitPic, which go um, to Twitter, um, and then I'll send, the, uh, I have like an email set up where it'll also send to uh, the Facebook fan page. So when I send a picture, it goes both to Twitter and to Facebook separately. And you go to Flickr? I, oh yeah, I go to Flickr too. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. So if you want to send pictures, um, and you could do these embeds then, uh, there's 
it may be on your WordPress afterwards, but if you want to send a picture through Twitter, TwitPic, um, is it YoFrog? YFrog, YoFrog, I don't use that one. Um, I, but I use TwitPic, I use Flickr, um, and there's automatic things you just put set up in your cell phone, so when you have a picture, you right away email to the Flickr account, to the TwitPic account, and then also Facebook, if you have a fan page uh, for your, yourself or your brand, you can send a separate email as well to that, so it uploads right to that um, Facebook account. Did, that, did you get that down? TwitPic, no, you might use, you set up an account online, you go to twitpic.com, and then you say set up for mobile, and they'll give you um, an email that you, you would set or set it up on your phone. So on your phone, you can add just as you have TwitPic. So when you're, you know, you email it through your phone. Yeah. Set up those accounts online first, and then set up the mobile. What did you mean by hub? I look, all right, so hub, that's actually a good question. Um, well, I look at my website as a hub. It's not just a blog, so it's a hub for all things for me and, and what I want to bring to the world. And, and I, I think once you start looking at it like that, you kind of you bring yourself to a larger level um, where it's not just like, oh, here's random updates about me, but here's the hub about everything I'm doing. Or if you have a brand, um, here are you know, the photos, the video, here's the press. It becomes an online hub for all things about that brand. That's why I just use the word hub. Because in the end, it, 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 a blog is a part of it. But my site isn't just a blog. It, you know, it has many different other functionalities to it. Even though it's, you, know, you put it together using WordPress, which is a blog functionality. You know. And this is your personal? Yeah, yeah, well, it's hard to see it because uh, it's not letting, usually there's always squares here. But this is my personal one where you, know, you go this to my awesome pick of the week, which you could click. And that on WordPress, I, I check it every time I have a blog. I can check whether it's featured in, in that top area right here. So whether it's an awesome pick of the week um, or stuff like that. So um, my awesome picks of the week here. Is that go somewhere? Didn't you see it just open up? Yeah. Oh, there. So um, these are some of the blog posts I've checked off when I when I'm in my WordPress. I put it as blog post as um, and then awesome pick of the week, pick of the week, which my content manager she set that up. Um, but so. Um, yes, I use um, this. Uh, these girls called Circle Dot here. You go to circledot.com. And they have their contact right there. They're actually, they were really good, uh, they were good to work with. Because they, uh, you know, what I find with these blogs is that you want something that's simple, but something that has energy that has your flair to it. And they really kind of brought that together. It, it's hard to see those on my thing because uh, mine has the squares which really make it kind of that more cool look. But, um, I really like what they do. So that's really good. Mine. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Uh, a quick question about audio. Um, do you use external mics sometimes? If so, what? Yeah, Blue Microphone. Oh, I don't have it on me. Has a really great. Um, here, we're gonna look it up right now. I'll show you. I really. Uh, if you're gonna use something, um, BlueMic.com. And they either have, they have one called, I think, the Yoda, which is this crazy mic that's like Leo Laporte style. He even has one. If you're going to do audio that way, um, and this is it. That's the Yeti. That thing is crazy. Like, if you're doing podcasts or any sort of audio, the Yeti, Y-E-T-I, I suggest. I also use the Snowflake, um, or no, the Eyeball 2.0. This is what I've been using, um, very simple, it's small. I put it on top of my, it just like leans on top of my laptop like that. And when I'm on Skype, I just change in preferences. Instead of get video from Skype, it says get video from Eyeball. Um, and you can connect any of your other video here to it. And so it has a light and it also has a little camera that flips out of it. And the video quality is much better too as well. It has HD video. 
from your laptop, which is pretty cool. So just go to bluemike.com. They're both great. All right. Yes. Can you mic the iPhone? Can you mic? Yeah, uh, you can mic the iPhone. I haven't done it. I have not uh, done that, but you can mic the <coughs> I think. I'm pretty sure you can. That was not with any mic. That was just your phone. Yeah. That was just my phone. I say it's like if you are going to use a mic for stuff like that, just try to obviously be in places that it's not crazy loud and try to get a bit closer to them. Um, but there are, if you, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have that answer for you, but if you Google, I'm sure there are ways you can connect um, mics with the mic jack, uh, with the uh, headphone jack. There are mics like that.